have the honor today of having somebody with us who actually is a living example of DBT. So um, I am very proud to say that I'm proud to work with this young woman. Um, I love to watch her grow and blossom um, as a person, um, and she has really made a lot of progress and is really embracing her recovery. So I would like you, and she's going to give her testimonial and her account of DBT and what it's done for her and a little bit of her background. So I'd like to introduce Ms. Lelia Warren. Hi. Um, I suffer from bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, and a post-traumatic stress disorder. But it's not who I am. I don't let it define me. The hardest part of my life um, would definitely be when I was first diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I didn't want to accept that. I thought I could. I thought I could fix myself on my own, and for years I tried to. But once. I understood that there was actually something wrong, like something in my brain didn't work correctly. It allowed me to um, admit that I needed medication and therapy in addition to what I was doing because what I was doing was not working. Um, when I first came and saw Dr. Chaudhry, I was a self-mutilator. I had an eating disorder. Um, I was doing the things that I knew that I thought would help me through my life. While going through sessions with him and meeting with Kim, and meeting with Kim as well, like I learned that my behaviors um, were not effective. Uh, there were negative consequences to them because if you cut, then you have that scar for the rest of your life. It doesn't go away. And <clears throat> but I also remember that Dr. Chaudhry told me that I was doing the best that I that I knew at that time. I was doing what I knew. He was going to give me a different way to live. And with bipolar disorder, um, there's basically two states, and it's depression and mania. For me, depression is pretty bad because I have severe depression, and it's wintertime, and I have seasonal affective disorder on top of that. So winter is not my favorite season, but for me, mania has been a nightmare. Um, so when I first started seeing them, you know, they're like, you gotta go to DBT, you gotta go to these groups. Let me tell you, if you walk into a DBT group, it's daunting because there's at least 30 plus people there. And you're brand new and you don't know what you're doing. And these people are sitting there talking about mindfulness and emotion regulation and you're like, what the hell am I doing here? And honestly, when I started, you know, I was a very willful little thing, and I did not want to do it, and I went because my parents made me, and, you know, I never, you know, thought it would help me. And it's funny, because I was talking to Kim today, and I was like, you know, <laughs> for me to admit that these skills have actually helped me in my life, when I was just like, they don't do anything, um, that's huge. And the core skill of DBT is mindfulness. I cannot tell you how much that has impacted and, and um, changed my life in a very positive way. Mindfulness is just like being in the moment. Whatever you're doing, you do it. So like uh, John Cotton said, if you're eating, you eat. When you're walking, you walk. When, you breathe, when you're breathing, you just focus on your breath. You push away nothing. You push away nothing, but you cling to nothing. You allow thoughts to come and go, but you don't ruminate on them, basically. Um, distress tolerance is also a skill that I learned. Distress tolerance is what helped me stop cutting. Because they give you different ways to deal with your issues. And one of the ways that uh, you can, that they have me um, try that would help me with cutting was something called sensation. So every time I had an urge to cut, I would go and turn the water on to as hot as I could get it that I could handle, stick my hands underneath it, and it was it was pain, but it was a diff it was a different way of dealing with it. And that worked. And for a while I had the gum band on my wrist and you know, there were days where I would just snap it all day long. And then um, I also found 
and I still keep these with me. I have prayer stones that, like, I'll, I'll take to work with me every day because they're little enough they'll fit in my pocket. And, you know, my job stresses me out. People stress me out. So knowing that that's there, to me, that helps me. And there's also, like, they have you do self-soothing basket. <coughs> that is, is where you take things like, I have a mindfulness CD, I have a purple monkey that I sleep with, I can't believe I just looked at that. Um, <laughs> I have like meditations, I have certain quotes, I have music, like, and I, you put it all in this basket and like when you're stressed out and you know, like you don't know what to do, you just turn to whatever's in the basket that you think can help you and like it really does help you through it. Right now, in because in, I'm in women's group now, and I have to admit I like that better than DBT because DBT is a lot of people. Women's group is a little bit of people, and it's a lot more. I like it a lot more. Um, and we're doing uh, interpersonal effectiveness, which one of the things with borderline personality disorder, besides the fact that I would take on other people's behaviors <laughs> and uh, adapt them and make them my own, which I learned. Like, at first I didn't know why I did it, but then when they explained to me like what borderline was, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Um, Dear Man is what we're working on right now, and like, um, I don't know what else to say, I've only used it I think once, but it is effective. Sometimes it's not so effective, because if the other person knows you're going to use it, because we have a lady in our group that she and her husband go, oh, so you're going to do describe right now, you know, like, so it's not, I guess in that, um, area it's not effective but like honestly uh, I don't think I would be holding a full-time job right now um, I don't think I would be as um, vocal as I am now I don't think I would have come to a point with my disorder where I don't see it as just um, something's wrong with me you know like this is like my hardship in life. I see it as a gift. And I honestly don't believe without DBT and my team <laughs> that I would have ever gotten to a place where, you know, okay, yeah, I'm bipolar, but I'm a writer, I'm a singer. Um, I have tremendous, like, compassion for people, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I say, like, I have it, but it isn't who I am. So, that's how DBT is helping me and Dr. Chaudhry and Kim are like, so I'm really lucky to have found out. So.